discrimination still happens today. Surveys of um, patients show that um, black and Latino patients report being discriminated against by doctors and healthcare providers. And if you expand it to the people, their friends and family and people they know, the numbers get much higher. And we could actually, if we're going to be colorblind, we can't recognize that this is still going on. But if we can get past that, then we can think about strategic responses that providers could have to addressing people's concerns. So, you know, saying directly, I want you to know that I'm giving you the best care that I can. I'm giving you the care I would give my brother if he were sitting here. That we could actually address some of this if we were willing to admit that it's still happening today. Um, Another is the structural obstacles of poverty, which I've already mentioned, so I won't talk about. But structure is so missing from this approach that it's hard to talk about it. Um, but to make, to encourage doctors to be more sympathetic to the obstacles that people face because of poverty, not because of their racial or ethnic group. Um, and intersectionality, that's completely lost in this approach, which I've mentioned. And the last one is the action inaction which is, you know, really getting to sort of the critical approach to race, um, is this idea that a lot of, um, you know, a sort of common thinking about racial inequality among whites is that racism and to, as long as one isn't actually actively racist, doing discriminatory actions, that then they're not part of the problem. But in fact, a critical approach to race would say that by doing nothing, whites are part of the problem because the system is unequal and doing nothing is to participate in an unequal system. This is obviously a hugely radical point of view compared to what most people think about inequality or race. And we couldn't teach doctors this and expect doctors to become a bunch of anti-racism activists. But it is an interesting thing to think about because one of the things in that other paper um, well, in the other data set, it's not in the paper. But that was interesting was we asked doctors, do you think um, the best approach is to treat all patients exactly the same or something like that? Because, it, and mostly they say yes. But in fact, it's not always the best to treat everyone the same. You know when you're raising your kids, you say that. This kid needs a little more freedom and this kid needs to be reined in. I mean, you treat people differently based on where they are. Not based on generalizations about them, but based on their experience. Um, so to treat everyone the same is not necessarily the answer. Plus, to do nothing is often to let things go by. So you know that you know, in your clinic something's happening that needs to be addressed to create better outcomes for people. You have to do something about it to make change. So that is the most unlikely thing I <laughs> suggest might happen. Um, but still, it, it's something to think about, and that's part of race theory, this approach that I'm using. Okay, so. So in the end, the first thing I want to say is, there are lots of good people doing this cultural competence work. And my biggest fear in writing the paper is, is them. Um, is that I'm not trying to say that these people are bad people who are promoting a racist agenda, because in fact I think they're good people who want things to be better. But what I'm trying to argue in the paper is that what is hard to see is how our broader cultural ideology about race influences what we think is the right path to take and what we can't see at all. So this approach is appealing and it seems common sense because we like to think about race in cultural terms. We like to think about race as something that can be solved without white people doing anything very differently at all. Um, and so it, it seems good. Um, and there's no accountability, there's no looking at social structure. But it doesn't match with empirical evidence about why we have racial inequality in healthcare, and nothing in theory and in the empirical research about racial inequality suggests that it will work. Um, so, you know, there is, um, there are alternative approaches that people have um, done, which are interesting, and, and I don't go into in the paper, but thinking about why they don't take. Um, because you will see these critical articles or completely different approaches. For example, there's some people who use um, social cognitive theory to try to teach doctors how to manage subconscious stereotyping that they might do. Um, there's other people, there's another person who uses racial identity theory to try to teach whites about whiteness and about what that means for how they see the world. 
These papers come, one was in 2005, one was in 2007. They don't take hold. And in fact, the, um, some of the people who do the subconscious stereotyping work, I mean, they feel really like um, a lot of people don't like them. <laughs> and, um, and they often feel slighted, actually, when it comes to things like that IOM book and different things. They don't get included, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's the beauty, actually, of being an A&S person instead of a school of public health or a medical person. I have freedom. I don't need grant money. I don't need to be on these panels for my career. But they do, and so it's just, it's, it's a hard thing. But anyway, so there are these alternative approaches out there that hopefully I can keep, I can stand behind. Um, so, you know, part of how I see this paper is a chance to move forward to try to think about how to solve the problem of racial inequality in healthcare and about how racial ideology um, shapes the language and the boundaries of the discussion and to, to recognize so that we can move forward how this cultural competence approach has such a strong appeal and that then we need to set that aside and continue on to find a better solution. Thank you. I'm sorry I move around so much when I talk because I'm, <laughs> I'm not good for being videotaped. We have about 15 minutes to begin.